part. We have a number of major milestones between now and the launch. Uh, at T minus seven minutes, 20 seconds, the orbiter access arm will be retracted. Uh, gimbal checks of the orbiter's aero surfaces will be conducted at about T minus four minutes. And then at about T minus two minutes, 55 seconds, the liquid oxygen tank pressurization and retraction of the gaseous oxygen vent arm and hood will start. Countdown clock will resume on my mark. Five, four, three, two, one, mark. And we're at T minus nine minutes and counting, and the ground launch sequencer has been initiated. NASA test director John Guidi is about to call for the transmittal of stored pre launch commands as Atlantis is only nine minutes away from launch on a mission to the Mir space station to retrieve astronaut John Blaha, who has been in space now for the past four months. Very soon now, pilot Brent Jett will be flipping switches in the cockpit to directly connect the three fuel cells to the essential power buses. And the orbiter access arm is now being retracted away from the vehicle. This is the walkway used by the crew to gain entry into and out of the vehicle, and it can be returned to position within seconds if need be. As the access arm continues to be retracted, we're at T minus seven minutes and counting. And the orbiter test conductor, Ray Prost, has given pilot Brent Jett the go-ahead to perform, to perform the auxiliary power unit pre-start procedure. Jett will set the switches in the cockpit to put the three power units in the ready-to-start configuration. T minus five minutes, 30 seconds, and counting. T 
T-minus, five minutes and counting. TLS is go for open AP start. And we have a go for APU start. OTC, perform APU start. APU start, it works. CDRTC, reconfigure heaters. Heater reconfigure is complete. The launch team is terminating the liquid oxygen replenish to the external tank. And the team is now initiating locks drain back. The solid rocket boosters and external tank safe and arm devices are being armed. Main fuel valve heaters on the three shuttle main engines are being turned on in preparation for launch today. The final purge sequence of the main engines is underway. T minus four minutes and counting. Yeah, let's just go for purge sequence four. The final test of the flight control services will be conducted next. This is a program pattern of movements designed to verify the readiness for launch of the engines and other flight control services. And the three main engines are being gimbled as a final test before launch. T minus three minutes and counting, and all is going well for today's launch. This mission carries a crew of six who will spend the next 10 days in space, five of those days docked with the Mir space station. Final pressurization of the liquid oxygen tank located inside the external tank is now underway. The gaseous oxygen vent hood will slowly be retracted away from the top of the external tank. memory, verify no unexpected errors. The orbiter test conductor has requested that pilot Brent Jet clear the caution and warning memory system. Everything looks good and we're cleared for launch today. No problems are being reported from the vehicle or the crew. So you see caution warning clear and there's no unexpected action. Okay, flight crew uh, close and launch device, initiate OT. And on behalf of the launch team, have a great night. T minus one minute, forty five seconds and counting. One minute, thirty seconds. And all systems are go. Spatial Atlantis is about 90 seconds from beginning its 10-day mission to dock with the Mir space station. T minus one minute, 15 seconds. T minus one minute and counting. Everything is still looking good for launch of the shuttle Atlantis from Kennedy Space Center in Florida. T minus 50 seconds and we're transferring to orbiter internal power at this time. Atlantis is now running off of its three onboard fuel cells. Coming up on a go for auto sequence start. And we have a go for auto sequence start. Atlantis' onboard computers have primary control of all the vehicle's critical functions. T minus 20 seconds. T minus 15. 12. T minus 10. 9. 8. We have a go for main engine start. We have main engines up and running. 3. 2. 
one, booster ignition, and liftoff of the Space Shuttle Atlantis on a 10-day mission to dock with Russia's orbiting outpost. Houston now controlling the flight of Atlantis. Atlantis, welcome. Roger, roll, Atlantis. Atlantis into the roll to place the shuttle in a head down wings level position for the eight and a half minute ride to orbit. Thirty seconds into the flight, Atlantis's three liquid fuel main engines now throttling back in a three-step fashion to 67% of rated performance. That will dampen the stress on the shuttle's aero surfaces as it breaks through the sound barrier. One minute into the flight, the main engine's now beginning to rev up to full throttle, 104% of rated performance. The throttle up call coming up from spacecraft communicator Kevin Kriegel here in Mission Control. Minus, go at throttle up. Roger, go at throttle up. One minute, 20 seconds into the flight, Atlantis traveling at 1,500 miles per hour. Now 10 miles downrange from the Kennedy Space Center, 13 miles in altitude. The shuttle's three main engines, three auxiliary power units, three power-producing fuel cells, all functioning normally. One minute, 50 seconds into the flight, standing by for solid rocket booster shutdown and jettison that command to come from the onboard computers through the master events controller on board Atlantis. Booster officer confirms a clean solid rocket booster separation. Guidance now converging on Atlantis's three main engines as they begin to steer for a precise keyhole in space for main engine cutoff. Nominal. 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 Roger, performance nominal. Minus two engine maroon. Engine maroon. Those calls from spacecraft communicator Kevin Kriegel to Commander Mike Baker aboard Atlantis indicating that the uh, solid rocket boosters provided the desired performance during the first stage of uh, this morning's ascent to orbit. And if one, en if one main engine should fail, Atlantis has enough inertia to make a transoceanic abort to Maroon, Spain. However, all three main engines continue to function by the book three minutes into the flight. Flight, everything continuing to look good aboard Atlantis. Three good main engines, three good auxiliary power units, three good fuel cells. Atlantis traveling at 4,300 miles per hour, 120 miles downrange from the Cape. Environmental Systems Officer reports the activation of the flash evaporator system aboard Atlantis to provide cooling for orbiter systems until the payload bay doors are open one hour and 25 minutes into the flight. Negative return. Roger, negative return. Commander Mike Baker acknowledging the negative return call. Atlantis now too high in altitude, too far downrange to return to the Kennedy Space Center in the event of an engine failure. However, Atlantis's three main engines continue to function by the book at the four and a half minute mark into the flight. Atlantis now traveling at 5,500 miles per hour, almost 200 miles downrange. Select Zaragoza. Roger, pressed ATO, selecting Zaragoza. Commander Mike Baker and pilot Brent Jett at the controls on the flight deck of Atlantis, joined by flight engineer John Grunsfeld and mission specialist Jeff Weissoff. Down on the mid-deck, mission specialist Marsha Ivins and mission specialist Jerry Linninger, headed for the Mir space station and four months in orbit.
Five minutes into the flight, everything looking good aboard Atlantis, now 240 miles downrange from the Kennedy Space Center. Atlantis' main engines consuming a half a ton of fuel per second from its external fuel tank. Atlantis, single engine, Ops 3. Roger, single engine, Ops 3. That call indicating that if two main engines were to fail, Atlantis could still make a transoceanic abort to Marone, Spain. Everything continuing to look uh, very good aboard Atlantis, however, now traveling at 7,700 miles per hour, 314 miles downrange, 70 miles in altitude. Atlantis single engine Zaragoza 104. Roger, single engine Zaragoza 104. Roger, and press to Miko. Press to Miko. That call up from spacecraft communicator Kevin Kriegel indicating that uh, Atlantis can now make a normal main engine cutoff targets in the event of an engine failure. However, all three main engines continue to function down the pike, everything looking good aboard the orbiter. Two minutes of powered flight left for Atlantis, now traveling almost 10,000 miles per hour, 444 miles downrange from the Kennedy Space Center. Atlantis single engine press 104. Single engine press 104. 